Hello and welcome yourselves back to the YouTube channel. We have a brand new and old trailer in the Star Wars universe, the prequel that tells the tale of Cassian Andor up to the build-up of Rogue One, a 12-episode series that has officially been delayed by three weeks. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, it's not technically in many ways been delayed because it was, you know, we're still getting the same amount of episodes if it was the 31st to the 21st um with because we're getting three episodes on launch and this trailer was fantastic you know bloody hell we saw the return of Sol Guerrero and the actor looks brilliant by the way um it's brilliant that's the, the father the father of the Skarsgård family he's obviously a main character and I want to say you know my knowledge of Star Wars is great but when it comes to the visuals of planets what I may say now and may be wrong I believe it was Coruscant um that appeared throughout this trailer and you know the the posher stuff the parties that were going on <clears throat> the uh the meetings of the politicians more politics in the series which uh you know we've had since phantom menace attack of the clones period um and i love that you know i i think um diego diego's done a fantastic job he looks brilliant um I think he's, pull, he's going to pull this role off very well. But I have another pet peeve. You know, if you remember um, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of Jedi, of course, the three films that all take place after this, there was... It's weird. There was never many female Imperial leaders or, you know, leading the armies or <clears throat> rebelling. It was all damsels in distress. And I know that's how it was written, but you're sort of contradicting what's happening because in these trailers, there's a lot of strong women. We saw it in the sequel trilogy. There's a lot of strong women. There was obviously a strong Jedi. Um, and it's this thing of... The, you're just... I don't know if they're doing it for the sake of just filling a role because they want more women to have these roles. But then when you get to A New Hope, no women are in charge or empire or it's it just it's all men because they are the dominance in the star wars uh, imperial line and it's just it, it's sort of complicating the canon i get you want to change who's being casted in which roles and making these women fears but the there's no women that ever come into line and it's just a little bit of a pet peeve thing for me um give women to any other role in the show you know if it's you know like the role um the person who's with Cassian Andor in this, who was in Emerald City and stuff, that's a role, yeah, you get, because women are going to rebel. That, that's what you understand, because Princess Leia was like that, you know. Padme was like that in the prequels. But putting women in power of being leaders, you know, you saw there was a couple of scenes where they were heavily focused on and leading men and leading troopers, and you're thinking, oh, in, you know, in, in a few weeks women never lead again so they don't even lead in oh yeah it's a topic I can all day cast people in the respective position and it, it's because you need to stay in this structure um it's they tried you know like how raver for example teams up with vader that makes sense because she's not in charge she's working with vader these people look like they're leading <clears throat> um it just doesn't make sense if you think about it because you bring all these characters in. So did they all die? Did they all die and we never see him again? <laughs> uh, make it make sense. But anyway, um, overall, you know, visually, soundtrack, character-wise, the connections from the prequels to the sequel, uh, to the to the original trilogy, I think it's brilliant. I think what they're trying to achieve here is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, every part of this trailer worked for me. You know, the shot of the Imperial massive shit going across um in the sky when everyone looking up that was brilliant um <clears throat> tie fighters and there was just so much to love about this trailer and it's intriguing to see where it goes because you know you're gonna see a lot more stealthy stuff you're gonna see i mean there was like junkyards that reminded me of star wars jedi fallen order i thought that was brilliant there's a lot to the Android trailer that gives vibes from every film and every era of star wars in my opinion 
And if done right, if done properly and if executed perfectly and the fans can get behind it and support it, I believe Andor has the potential and it's the most random show to ever come in my opinion because we didn't technically need it, but it could be one of the strongest Star Wars projects to date. Like Mandalorian, we didn't necessarily ever think we needed it, but because of what Pedro Pascal did working with Jon Favreau, he achieved greatness. And I think because of the love Rogue One gets and what Diego Luna... <clears throat> And that's his name. Did for Rogue One. He being thrown into this and having Scars Guard and multiple other iconic actors and actresses who are scattered through this trailer. They will have a blast because the visuals are there. As I said, Coruscant, TIE Fighters, X Wings, Stormtroopers, Imperial Forces, Rebellion, Stealth, all of this sort of stuff in one trail. And it's just what Star Wars fans need. So go check out Andor Trailer 2. It's dropped on September with three episodes. And I genuinely can't wait to binge the three episodes and then get into the flow of the nine weeks that follow as we build towards Season 2 in 2023 or 2024, depending on the, the slate of Star Wars. So I hope you enjoyed the trailer as much as I did. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.